Okay, well, this is, uh, I suppose, a somewhat off the cuff uh, video response that I had no intention of making, no plan uh, of making that has been inspired or required by a guy called David Williams. That's not David Walliams off, off of uh, Little Britain, but close, only one letter away, uh, who asked me a question on Facebook. What has happened is Hannibal the Victor has made a video, a 27, 28 minute video, something like that, largely about me. Um, my kind of rubbish bin had, had, had overflowed by about 13 or 14 minute mark. He'd made so many erroneous remarks about me, so many false accusations. I just I just went to bed. I just switched it off and went to bed at that point. What, what I found marvellous about the video, I had no plan of making a response. Was it's so obviously over the top. It's so obviously fallacious for anybody who's watched... Um, any amount of my output uh, who isn't who hasn't just decided they dislike me right from the word go really that I didn't think it was worth responding it actually stands on its own I think it discredits him more than it discredits me but this guy David Williams asked me a very specific question about it and that made me think that maybe that was one part of the video that did require some clarification because if somebody in good faith was asking me that question then it probably required some clarification um, so let me try and explain what that was all about and I, I will provide in the footnotes a link to Hannibal's video I would ask that you go and watch Hannibal's video because that is the correct thing to do Hannibal you may notice Hannibal who made a whole series of claims about things that I've said things that I've wrote not one single link not one single piece of evidence well this is a response to Hannibal's video so I will do what Hannibal didn't which is to link you to his video and to ask that you go and watch his video with as open mind as you can manage to muster and if you've any uh, engagement with Hannibal in the past that will be hard if you haven't then that I'm sure will be easier to do uh, I will also link you to a few video videos that I've made that I think are pertinent one of them is a video regarding Rebecca Watson uh, called something like Rebecca Watson face punching and doxing yo which is a video that Hannibal he didn't link to it um, you just had to take his word for what I'd said, uh, but he made mention of it, and he made mention of the fact that it had been uh, 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 featured on the website A Voice for Men. Let me first say from the off, the first that I knew that this had been featured on the website A Voice for Men was about... 13 or 14 hours ago now something like that I think when I watched Hannibal's video that was the first that I ever knew that it had been featured because I don't google for my own videos right I just go to video manager and they are there um if I want to watch myself talking for any particular reason and um, so I wasn't aware of that I'm aware of that now but this David Williams has asked me to clarify what happened so let me explain a little bit about that video what had happened was this boils down to bewildered ape again he made a video called something like brother John or brother Paul or brother somebody brother brother John I think brother John has touched me or something like that and it was about punching it was about justifying violence domestic violence and violence generally and he also kind of linked it in it was a bit vague uh, to video game violence he kind of meshed in a whole series of things it didn't quite make sense um, but he featured this guy called Brother John or whatever he's called I think he's an MRA I, I can't quite remember that point but I think he's an MRA but he was this kind of British guy so uh, sometimes the best way to resolve things is a good punch in the face you know sometimes the quickest way the simplest way to resolve a dispute between a couple of people punch in the face and he criticised Brother John for that, and I agreed with him. He also went on to criticise a few other people on the same grounds. I did take issue with one of them when he juxtaposed the footage of somebody talking about one incident, as I mentioned on my last video, with an entirely different uh, piece of footage than the guy was actually talking about. Yes, I didn't like that, but I agreed with his video that violence is not the answer to these things. So it was really, really interesting when two or three literally two or three days later that's all it was Rebecca Watson made this blog post saying pretty much the same thing that actually sometimes a punch in the face is entirely justified not on the grounds of self-defense I will link you Rebecca Watson's blog post I would ask you to also do if you have an issue with what I said go and watch what I said rather than just listening to what Hannibal says that I said. One of the defences that was made was that perhaps Buzz Aldrin was being intimidated by this guy. I've got to mention this part. 
whether that is the case or not, it certainly didn't look it from the footage, that wasn't Rebecca Watson's point. Rebecca Watson's point was that simply by being in the guy's face, that was sufficient, right? So if you annoy somebody, if you pursue somebody long enough, they deserve a physical punch in the face. Now, I had an issue with that because that's exactly the kind of thing that happens in domestic situations, and I wouldn't like to see those situations spill over into domestic violence. Now, Hannibal's position was, well, you were the only person on the internet who felt like this, Noel Plum. Nobody else agreed with you on this. Well, look, I, I, I don't want to make some kind of um, argument from popularity, but that video got 400 odd likes and about six dislikes. So I certainly wasn't the only person that agreed with that. And when you make a video, when you upload a video for those who don't, uh, Google Plus auto generates a comment on your behalf, right? They might not even say anything, it would just be a blank thing. Bewildered Ape himself thumbs up that comment. Sequester Zone, who is another friend of Hannibal the Victor, he left a comment uh, agreeing with me and saying that he was going to make a video criticising Rebecca Watson for exactly the same reason. There were other people who were part of that I regard as part of the social justice camp who also left comments agreeing with me on that. So, so uh, the, 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 it is a total misbetrayal. Uh, of the actual video, the content of the video or the response the video got, the way that Hannibal did that. So I made that video, I, I'm assuming you can see how that tied in with what I'd just seen from Bewildered Ape, because what I wanted to show is yeah, people have these silly ideas uh, on all sides of the spectrum and it's not really a very good idea because it justifies violence where really we've got to try and draw a line in the sand. And for me and for most people, that line in the sand is violence for self-defense and not because somebody is in your face or because somebody won't let an issue go in the way that this guy was doing. So that's what that was all about. Now then, apparently a voice for men um, picked up on this and featured the video, right? Link to the video Hannibal has found this link and so this is part of his evidence that I am some closet MRA um, what, what I will do is there's not many times that I've talked about MRIs I've talked about Paul Elam in my last video he was the guy whose footage was juxtaposed with this other thing that he wasn't actually talking about by Bewildered Ape I mentioned him in the last video and whilst I criticised Bewildered Ape for what he did I called Paul Elam the head of A Voice for Men a cock does that sound like I'm on their side in any particular way when I made a video, it's another video that I'll link you called uh, Why I'm Not a Feminist, I was probably more dismissive of MRAs in that video than I was of, of feminism. And I, in fact, I mentioned in this video that a lot of people would class me as a feminist and then I gave the reasons why I don't prefer to use that term myself. That is the position. And I got more shit for that video from MRAs than I did for feminists. So if he has something that links me with MRAs, right? If he has a video, he claims I've got these anti-feminist videos, show me what they are, right? Show me what they are. The world is not quite as black and white as you make out. It isn't made of, of feminists and anti-feminists. Feminists. It isn't made of MRAs and anti-MRAs. It's made of people that are part of different uh, badges and categories who adopt different labels. People who are against those labels, but then a whole slew of people that are neither one nor the other. They're either ignorant, ambivalent, or 101 different things, their relationship with those particular labels. What happened with A Voice for Men, this video, all I can say is it's a little bit like Hannibal seeing Churchill and seeing Stalin during the Second World War, seeing them get on because there happens to be somebody that they both have some issues with, in this case Hitler and, and Nazi Germany, and saying, well, this is clear evidence that Winston Churchill is a closet communist. That is about as silly as the conclusion that he has drawn here. Hannibal's problem with me stemmed from a video that I made, as far as I'm aware, if he says it's a different one then he can show it, stemmed from a video that I made about Rebecca Watson and about her dismissal of evolutionary psychology um, at a Skepticon conference. I made a video about that, I will 
uh, put that video along with the other videos that I've made with regard to evolutionary psychology. He has issues with my stance on evolutionary psychology. He thinks that my position is a radical and extreme position. He thinks that position, which is my position, I look at every other mammal that is out there and every other mammal that is out there has uh, innate predispositions that are biological in nature. My position is that I think it's highly unlikely that human beings are going to be the only mammal that does not have innate biological, this is not biological determinism, this is innate biological predispositions. It is also my position that we don't have to live by those predispositions, we can choose to get rid of them and to try and rail against them if we wish, but that we will have them the same as every other fucking mammal that is out there. Hannibal regards this as an extreme position and he regards me as an extremist and somebody who's therefore a scientific know nothing but I'm in pretty good company of course the likes of people um, such as well I, I probably the largest scientific know nothing whatsoever would be the most famous proponent of evolutionary psychology uh, that, 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 that is alive today which would be Re Richard Dawkins he is another scientific know-nothing who obviously only supports evolutionary psychology because he has an MRA agenda that he's looking to underpin not that evolutionary psychology underpins any fucking agenda to do so is to make a naturalistic fallacy which is exactly what Hannibal is doing here because just because biology predisposes us to be violent for example doesn't mean we have to say well that justifies our violence rock on let's crack on being as violent as we possibly can my opinion is we're better off to know about it that makes us more able to do something about it than not do something about it that's pretty much all i'm going to say i'm not going to tackle all the other bullshit maybe just mention the fact gotta mention this one he talks about criticism of thunderfoot i said that i criticized thunderfoot he shows the post that i criticized thunderfoot he says, well, criticism could be anything. That could just mean criticising his neck beard or criticising other aspects of his appearance. You lying piece of crap, Hannibal. I, I, if you put links in a, comma, in, in a comment, right, on a video, they go, they are auto-spammed. And it relies on, I do this all the time, it relies on the videographer to go in there, tick them and unspam them. So I didn't include any links in that comment. I then sent him another comment straight after that with a series of links. Guess what? Right, the links of me criticising Thunderfoot, not because of his beard, but because of things that he'd said. Guess what? That comment still fucking languishes in his spam box. He's never let anybody see that. I can see that if I call his video up that you will... In fact, fuck it. Let's do this. Right, this is going to make for bad viewing because there's going to be a little bit of a gap here. But let's do this one. Let's let's have a look. Hannibal the Victor 13. Let's call that video up. Because I posted the comment, you will see the comment. Nobody else will see the comment because it's in the spam box. So let's have a find for that comment. YouTube Atheism Redux, here we go. Where's the one? There's the comment. Right, this is the comment. Look, this is the comment that you will not see. It has three thumbs ups because people who Google Plus, who are my Google, in my circle will see it. Nobody else will see them. Those were the comments that he never addressed. And not only didn't address, but made out as if I'd never made those comments in the first place. That's pretty much all I want to say. It's mainly that Voice for Men thing. I have no link to the Voice for Men. I'm not an MRA. Um, and I've never looked on the, the website of Voice for Man. It's not something, it's, the reason that I've never done any of that is because for me, they've never been the problem. They haven't been the group that's tried to co-opt uh, atheism with Atheism Plus or any of that crap. It's not those people that have tried to politically hijack the atheist community. They've got drawn into all this. It's like Pied Piper fucking piping all the rats into the building. They've scurried along because this group of radical feminists have scurried along. That's what's kind of happened and I have the opinion that if the radical feminists just kept their socio-political views to the socio-political sphere and their atheist views to the atheist kind of sphere that the MRAs would just rapidly disappear and go and pursue them in the relevant sphere and we'd all be left to carry on as we were to begin with. That's kind of where I'm at. Right, that's all I'm going to say now. Okay, bye.